All right, so uh, we're starting the Arcanaut frigate, and uh, here is the book, uh, the assembly book, and look at this thing, colored assembly book. I mean, this is this is really slick. I don't know how long GW has been doing this because I haven't purchased a GW kit in a, in a while, um, but man, this thing is so nice. Uh, I'm excited to get it together, and uh, I'm going to. Uh, do that now then I just just get rolling on it so um, pretty excited here's what the screws look like in box and um, yeah man I mean beautiful beautiful detail on it uh, I'm, I'm just so so pumped to see G-Dub doing something like this and uh, I know I'm sounding like a fanboy but I mean if if the kit was trash I would tell you it was trash um, some of the detail in here is just I mean, I don't even know if the camera can pick up how small that is. Can I get in there? Look at that. I mean, that is, that's incredible. Um, so yeah, this is the sprue. I'm going to wash this up. Um, typically, I don't use soap and water with sprues, but um, since it is such a new kit, I, I don't even know if that's still a thing. Do people still do that? I'm not even sure. But um, yeah, here's the other sprue. Uh, this is all the balls. <laughs> balls and looks like uh, the crew. Yeah, looking good. I mean, some of that detail is just... So sick. Look at all that. Very cool. Um, and I know they're pretty good with their seam lines and, and where they put stuff, um, but I'll show you uh, if I see any major things that, that come up. Um, I'll video what I, what I do to, to eliminate them. And um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, soak these guys up. We got a nice little base here. And uh, I'll probably do a separate video on how I'm going to do all the bases um, when I have more of them. Uh, in my possession so yeah I'm really pumped I mean these are looking so great there's one of the little uh, shoulder pads of the guys I'm going to make uh, little decals for those um, instead of painting them I just think that's just way too small for my old eyes um, so I'm just gonna make some small decals and pop them on uh, I'm not sure what I'm gonna go with yet uh, as far as the decals but I, ha I saw a really cool logo of the of the KOs online that uh, I might just copy and, and put on a lot of the stuff. Um, this is definitely going to have to be painted in pieces. So as I go through, I'll point out um, point out where I do separate those things. Um, like I said, the portholes I'm probably going to airbrush if you watch the intro video. Um, I like some of this as ball and socket, like right in here. Uh, the the gun actually just pops in and it can move. Um, that's something that I don't know if I've seen out of G-Dub before, um, maybe in 40k, a little bit more. Um, but I really love these guys, man. I, I know so many people are saying that they're, they're squats in their 40k, but um, I just think that, you know, moving forward with the timeline in AOS is, is a really cool idea. And uh, I'm excited to get these guys assembled. So I'm going to go through the book and uh, pop the video on whenever I, I feel like there's something to, uh, to show off and uh, go from there. So uh, here we go. Okay so early in the build um, I realized like if you can see this <laughs> this section it's the uh, I guess it's uh, you know where the captain controls. Um, that's really small. I, I considered painting it but uh, painting it separate but man that's really small. I just I think that's gonna just take a wash really nice and uh, not be too much of a focal point. You have so much else going on uh, in the kit that I, I don't think this needs to be like super painted well. Um, but we'll see because I mean you're gonna have a guy standing here. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But um, so far uh, no issues with the kit. Um, the uh, this Gorilla Glue with the brush is actually working pretty nice. Um, these guys go in. There's something I'm, I'm gonna look at here. Like you see these these lines here. I don't know I don't know if I'm going to fill them in or not. Um, it kind of goes with the aesthetic, I guess. Uh, I mean, this could be a big metal plank that's just bolted in, so it doesn't need to be one piece, right? I, I don't think. Um, but yeah, the, the glue's working pretty good. I, I, I love having a brush. It's, it's pretty neat, and it actually has uh, has two options here. Let me pull this out. So yeah, you, you know, a little brush here. You get a, get a little bit on and, and do what you need to do. Um, Obviously, maybe not that much, but uh, yeah, it's looking good, man. Uh, kit's going going good so far. 
Okay, so I got the hole assembled. Um, fit together pretty nice. I, I like how the rudder actually is non-glued, so it could move. Um, I, I don't know how, if I'll keep it like that or, eh, we'll see. I'm not sure. Um, there was some pretty nasty mold lines right in the rudder fins here. Uh, probably hard to see there, but uh, I took my little little sanding uh, file and got in there and filed them down a little bit. Uh, yeah, it went together pretty good, uh, pretty easily. And one thing I noticed, and I saw on some other people on Twitter who built this, um, this nasty uh, seam, well, it's where it goes together, seam line down the face. I got some super glue. I'm going to have to sand that. I'm going to fill all this in. In fact, you can actually see some light through it. Um, I'm going to fill this in uh, probably with uh, probably with wood filler, I think. Because I don't really need to sculpt and like, you know, green stuff is so good for sculpting. Um, I don't think I need to sculpt it. I think it just needs to be filled in sand a little bit. It's a shame that it's right down the nose there. Uh, it's kind of a bummer because it's such an uh, iconic part of the, of the ship. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to fix that up a little bit. Uh, but all in all, went together a lot of the seam lines. Uh, a lot of the... Uh, uh, the molding connection points are, are clipped in like underneath so it's overlapping uh, so you don't really have to you just need to make sure they're they're filed down enough that this this closes on itself tight um, but yeah it's looking uh, looking pretty good uh, I think I imagine that most of this will be will be a part will be like this for me to paint it and then I'll paint the gun separate paint the balloons and uh, obviously the crew separate and then glue them down in uh, when it's said and done. I do like how that tail moves. I think it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not, you know, it's really not that functional. It doesn't really do anything, but it is, uh, it is pretty neat. But yeah, that just that face there, that got to get fixed up. So uh, we'll do, uh, we'll show you how I fix that up. Yep, so moving on. Okay, so on the very, ne very next step in the book, um, these are the, uh, let's just call them fins for now. Uh, they go into... Uh, there's a piece that connects here and they go in here. Um, this is a good spot. I'm going to leave the rudders off because all you get to do is glue them in. I'm going to leave these off so that... Wait, are these the, are these called rudders? Or fins? Fans? I don't know. Um, but this is a nice little area that uh, can just be painted separate. Like it, it might be hard once it's on the ship like that to uh, to get in there and paint them. But um, I would just leave them separate. And it actually gives you an opportunity, like where the fin is here, to, uh, you could do a little gradient there with the airbrush, right? So whatever color I paint this, if it's like white or whatever, but I could go dark in the middle here and then um, just fan it out real easy with like maybe one, one other color and then just come in with the brush and paint those. So those are going to stay off uh, separate. And um, I know some people don't do this, um, but say like, so I got my, probably can't see it, but I got um, just a little bit of the, the flashing there from the thing. A lot of people have a special tool from G-Dub to, to scrape it off, but really, if you're careful with your X-Acto knife, uh, you can just get in there, scrape it off, give it a little blow, and uh, you know, you just keep working it. You hear that clicking, you know that you're still hitting, so you can just keep moving. And think of it as like, um, I don't know, you're just shaping this a little bit, right? You're trying to get that plastic off and, and that little nub there, and you're just shaping it, and you can almost listen till it, to hear when it's gone. And I'm not going straight down with the knife like this. I'm, I'm going on a little bit of an angle and just scraping it, just the same way you would use a scraper. Um, you're going to take a little bit more away because the exacto is so sharp. But um, if you do it right, you know you can get that nice and smooth. And you can run your finger over it and see it. Um, you see, there's another there's another mold line here. Um, this one's easy to get with the uh, the exacto blade. And the texture will look a little different when it's when it's uh, gray like this, but once you get paint on that, that just disappears. It's, it takes a few seconds to do it. Do it, guys. To get rid of your mold lines, it, it's so important. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's a little spot I came up. So I'm going to leave these separate and uh, and paint them separate. Okay, so we got the hole done. Um, went together pretty good. Got the, I don't know what the ailerons, I guess, they'd be called in. Um, yeah, it went together pretty well. I left off some pieces here, with the rudders, uh, the uh, the bomber rays, they just fit in there really nice. So I'm just gonna paint them separate. It'll be easier to do that way. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, these little guns, they actually pop into a little ball and socket joint in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so I don't know if I'll glue them in place or not, uh, but it'd be kind of cool if they could move, I guess. Um, so that's pretty neat. Along the bottom, just some pet peeve like filling stuff I got to do here along this, this seam line. Um, and if you can see this little ball, this it's a pretty bad, pretty bad seam. I don't know if that's focusing. Anyway, but yeah, there's a scene that. So I'm going to do all the filling out at once. Um, I have I'm moving on to the spheres next uh, that float above the ship and uh, keep it afloat. So yeah, everything's going good. It's a beautiful kit so far. I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, just the just pet peeve seam lines. And when the ship's like this on a basis, are you really going to see it? It's just something that I'm going to. I'm gonna do myself. <laughs> I know some people could just let that go um, pretty easily, but it doesn't take me long, and uh, I got the tools to do it, so I might might as well do it. Uh, but yeah, that's how it's looking so far. All right, so here she is, all built, um, and the pieces that I'm gonna keep off. Uh, like I said, the ship went together pretty nice. Uh, the orbs went together pretty nice. There's a couple little spots here. I'm gonna have to fill that. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a nasty seam there. Um, the pilot's going to sit in there, so some of that's going to be blocked. Not the pilot, but whoever's in a crow's nest. Well, I guess a lot of it does get blocked. Um, just at the top there, I guess I'll fix up. Uh, but that's not too bad. Um, everything went together great. It's a really nice kit. I'm going to keep all these guys separate so I can airbrush these. Um, there's a little seam in there. I'll probably put a little putty on or something um, in between them. But, yeah, so uh, the kit's built. Next, I will be uh, getting these guys primed and and start get some paint on. So let's do that. Okay, so uh, it's gonna it's time to fill all these things, uh, these seam lines. Now, there's definitely a lot of ways you can do this. Um, I use Magic Sculpt sometimes, which is really nice. You can get uh, you can get uh, where is it? Here it is. Oh, I got it. I'll show you what this is. So, uh, Magic Sculpt is two-part epoxy. You can use something like this. It's a little softer than green stuff. Um, works really good. I mean, it's still a sculpting tool. Um, of course, you know, you got your big tube of green stuff. Um, but what I like to use, and I've been using lately, is a good old-fashioned wood filler. Um, I'm going to plop some out here and, uh, and show you how this works. Um, get myself a little palette of some sort. Yeah. So, you just take some wood filler, and this stuff's water soluble, so uh, you can mix it with water to thin it out and get a more uh, a smoother, more consistent, uh, I guess, texture flow of it. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit right there, and then, uh, let's see, depends on how thick this is. Uh, let's. See. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. We're just going to put this on here and see how it goes. Um, this is a little like, I think it's like a makeup tool. Yeah, I see it's a little, a little uh, gooey. So let's get that in like that and start getting it on there. I know it's a messy, messy process. But the idea is you want to fill that crack in and then you can always fix what you need to fix um, with sanding. And... Uh, even just like with an exacto blade or something. Um, so I'm kind of filling that in. And get a little more here. I know it looks ridiculous on his nose, but um, it's going to do what it needs to do. So, like that. Like I said, it is a little bit of a messy, uh, messier way of doing things, but you can help that with another little tool here so yeah it just kind of fits in I mean it's I don't know kind of like a liquid green stuff I guess um, fill that crack in you can go back to the lines here and get it going and if you want water it down a little bit so yeah it's I mean obviously it's a little messy but um, the nice thing is you can kind of go back with your finger brush off some of that and start filling that crack in. Uh, it may, might take a couple times and I really don't want to get it uh, in 
places where I don't want it, um, like his eye. But that can always uh, can always come out later. So yeah, so I'm just going to uh, I'm going to do that, fix up the ship, and see it it dries so fast too. You can kind of get in there and and manipulate it a little bit more. Obviously, you don't want any in these holes, um, but you can clean that out when it's dry. It's a little easier than I'm doing it off camera, of course. So I'm not used to it. Um, so there we go. Now, and that's just the start. Uh, I'll go through and finish up when I want to finish up with this. But I just want to show you how you can use wood filler to uh, to fill. And hopefully when we get some prime on this, you'll notice that that crack will be gone. And if it isn't, we will uh, fill it up some more. So yeah, um, wood filler. So we filled everything that we wanted to fill. Um, this guy, and I'm a mess of me. <laughs> um, so I filled this here. I'm not sure how this is gonna gonna look. I'm gonna get some primer on it, and uh, if it's filled, great. If not, I'll put another one on. Um, I imagine this is a door here, like this pops open. So I left that there, but I I filled the line underneath. Uh, I think that makes sense. Uh, just filled that little nub of a ball in so that I can just sand that, and hopefully it'll get nice and round. Um, yeah, I like the nose. Again, see what I did there. Um, hopefully with some sanding, that'll look good. Uh, I'm going to leave this dry just a little bit longer uh, before I sand it. Um, but that should be alright. I did the, these little joints here, had a little line in, so I fixed that up, uh, hopefully. And we'll give that a sanding when it's dry. Um, this stuff dries pretty quick. I think it says it's sandable within... Uh, let's see... 15 minutes and deep repairs out there. Yeah, so repair, so small stuff, 15 minutes, and uh, it can sand. So I'm just gonna give that a break and uh, get sanding, and I'm gonna get some primer on this. All right, so I just gave all the little pieces of sanding. I'm um, using a thousand grit sandpaper. Um, I think they'll be okay. Uh, we'll see. I kind of I don't like that little fill there. I might have to be fixed. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it comes out. And that's a great thing, like you prime it, and if it uh, doesn't look right, you can sand it down, reprime it again, here's the face. Um, hopefully it'll look alright. We'll see how it comes out. But uh, I think it's time to prime. Let's get priming. Okay, so I got everything mounted up on, uh, on my uh, wine base corks. This is a great use. Well, corks if you're a wine drinker or you know one or a family member is uh, friends have them save their corks um, they're just so usable in, in so many aspects you can cut them up make rocks and bases for bases and stuff um, these balls I don't know <laughs> I don't know how to mount these yet um, yeah I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with those uh, I might drill a hole Maybe I'll drill a hole in one of these connection points and just glue something in. It's probably a good idea. Um, on this one, ugh, I don't know. Maybe I could super glue it to that. I don't know. But this guy, this is a little bit more precarious. I got I got him up on just basically like an old paintbrush. Um, it's up there, but I really want to be able to get to the bottom of the ship uh, when I'm painting it. So I just got to be careful with this not popping out. I'm sure a lot of it I'm going to be grabbing the ship as I'm painting anyway. But, um, yeah, so hopefully that'll hold up. But, yeah, here you go. You get three wine corks, glue, hot glue them all together, put a stick in it, and you got a mount for, uh, for paint stuff. I mean, this just makes it so much easier for the airbrush um, for priming and for getting in the hard spots. I mean, all everybody's just, I'll use a little hot glue, hot glue them down. Um, glue comes off relatively easy um, the wheel here I accidentally glued upside down so it's just gonna stick like that but that might be a problem I have to pull that out and fix that um, I decided I'm probably going to just magnetize the guns I don't know if it really matters um, but there's only two to paint so I'll just paint them up and where I drilled in a hole for the stick that's where I'll throw a magnet in and uh, that they click on to uh, the canopy here and I'll put a magnet in there but it's pretty neat, this, uh, the front uh, thing slides, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's that. I sanded things. I'm gonna, now's the time I'm going to check with the primer 
um, to uh, to see how it looks. I don't know. I don't know if I'm just gonna hold on to these guys when I paint them. Um, they're kind of a kind of a weird shape and size to to paint off, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right. So got them out. Let's uh, let's prime it up. All right. So we're gonna uh, get the prime in here, and uh, my camera hates this angle apparently, and the blue paper because it really doesn't want to focus. Uh, so let me see here. If I can get it to focus. There we go. All right. So just using the trusty Iowa Revolution, and you will hear my compressor going off. Um, ideally, my first thing I want to do uh, is see how this line looks um, with the filler. So we're going to do that. Let that dry a little bit, and just find the rest of it. Um, this airbrush is just been a workhorse for me. It's lasted a very, very long time. Um, it's bits and spatters, and I've tried cleaning it and. I think I need some new parts, but uh, it still is a workhorse and it is absolutely awesome for priming. Um, sorry for the camera angle, I gotta be off a little bit to my side because uh, I can't I can't paint <laughs> with it in my way. Uh, so we're just putting a good coat of black on here. Uh, this is Vallejo primer, the best best primer you could possibly get. Um, I know. Those of you out there love your rattle cans, uh, but I, pr I love priming through the uh, through the airbrush. You get so much more control, and thickness, and then you can come back with with other primer colors and lighter colors, and uh, and be able to use some pre shading type stuff. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of airbrushing through the primers, and I love just having a piece of paper here I could. Uh, just make sure everything's straight and right, and um, take a look at that face. Can you see it? I th think it's all right. I kind of want to put a little more filler in. Um, I don't know if you can really tell. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. I think when it's painted, I think it'll be all right. I, I might just sand it up just a little bit more in that one spot. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, I'm just going to primer this and uh, come back when I uh, start the camera, when everything is uh, all primed up. Okay, so uh, let's see. I just re-sanded this one more time. I think the last bit of primer on it. And that should be good. And I guess will see a little bit. That bothers me. I don't know why it's not filling in good. Alright, let's try this one. Right up a little bit. The face I'm happy with. I think the nose is good. Looks good. All right, so that's that. Uh, the shoulder I gotta fix. Got to fix up a little bit. Do that. Got these guys. And the last one. Um, so I was reviewing the videos, and I think um, this section. Running kind of long, so I'm just going to put this up kind of like the assembly and uh, priming and fixing. Um, I'll probably fix this one more time uh, before I go whole hog on it. Uh, I'll just start with a seam in that one. I'm just going to put a more priming. Another seam in that um, But yeah, that's it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap the video up here and get this one uploaded. And, uh, and then the next video will be on painting. I'm going to start, uh, probably start with the portholes of the ships. I'm going to do those green and finally come up with my color scheme. And you guys will have to uh, tune into the next video to see that. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Catch you on the next one.